Hey everyone, it's Matt from Matt Explorers, and today I am coming to you from the wonderful, um, albeit a little bit chilly, Mound State Park in Anderson, Indiana. If you are in the Indiana area uh, or reside in Indiana and you have not yet checked out Mound State Park, it's not as large as some of the state parks in Indiana, but it does have some great hiking trails, has access to the river, and of course it has the Indian mounds, which are quite interesting to check out. So highly recommend if you have uh, some time on your hands to come check this park out and uh, check out all of the Indiana state parks. They're fantastic. If you either live here or you're traveling through Indiana, I highly recommend them. My purpose today was to find a little bit of solitude to be able to finally bring you this video, the review of my ARB Outback modular storage system, specifically the modular storage system, the rolling drawer, rolling floor for the Jeep JL Unlimited. If you're like me uh, and you run a soft top year round, you might struggle for secure storage. Um, certainly the Jeep has the lockable glove box, lockable center console, and the underfloor storage in the back all work great. Uh, but for me, I found it somewhat annoying. I like to keep stuff in the center console that I would need either while I'm driving or when I make a, a quick stop. I hate to keep locking that and unlocking that. Glove box stays locked most of the time because it's just paperwork for the Jeep. It's also not very large to put a lot of stuff in there. And the under storage in the back certainly works, but it is limited. And if you're traveling, getting access to that can be annoying. If you've got a cooler and suitcases and you need to get something out, especially recovery gear or emergency gear, you're unloading the entire Jeep to get to that access. So I set out to find something that would solve for those problems, provide me lockable storage, but also something that's going to look good in the Jeep. There are a variety of options I looked at. One was the Tuffy security lid, which uh, I think works better in the JK than it does in the JL. Some of the feedback that I've seen in reviews online is that the soft top sometimes will not lock in place with the Tuffy security drawer or Tuffy security uh, lid in place. I've also heard it rattles a little bit, especially after several years of use. I also looked at the DZ and Smitty built uh, storage boxes, very much like a truck storage box, um, but um, kind of custom size to fit in the uh, back of the Jeep. Uh, inexpensive solutions, relatively speaking, two to three hundred dollar range, depending on what you're looking at. Uh, but the ARB system, which I also found on YouTube watching some um, some great overlanding videos um, is a completely different scenario. It is a drawer system uh, that really kind of mimics the lines of the Jeep, which you'll see here in a minute. It is not a cheap solution. In fact, it's probably one of the most expensive things that I have done or will do to this Jeep outside of suspension wheels or tire or uh, suspension wheels and tires. So uh, today I just kind of want to give you an idea of what this system is. There's not a lot of videos on YouTube speaking to this, and there's certainly at the moment not any videos specific to the JL. So we're going to talk about four or five things I like, four or five things that you may not like or you should think about before purchasing, and then I'll talk a little bit about the installation because it is a bit peculiar the way it works in the Jeep JL. So let's get into it. So let's first talk about what it is. If you've not seen the ARB system in a Jeep JL, now you have. Um, this is a modular system. So this piece here is part of the modular configuration in many vehicles. You might see this drawer in a 4Runner, in a Grand Cherokee, uh, in a Land Cruiser. This is just their piece, if you will, IKEA style. Uh, of a rolling floor and a rolling drawer. Uh, they make a rolling drawer only model that you can actually stack uh, in different vehicles. But this is the configuration that they recommend for a Jeep JL Unlimited. So you're going to get the rolling floor, rolling drawer, and you're going to get as a second part number, the floor installation kit specific to the Jeep, which is gonna get you these front panels, some bracketry, the brackets to hold the box in place specific to the Jeep, and you're going to get the lids for either side. So as the name would imply, it is a rolling floor, rolling drawer. The top section is the 
rolling floor. And it comes out about 10 inches, give or take. As you can see, I'm running the front runner tailgate table and it works actually really, really well with that. As you can see, they both really kind of complement each other. Uh, I would assume any tailgate table would be similar, but it gives you a nice opportunity if you've got a Dometic fridge, a cooler, um, want some additional prep space. This is really gonna be a nice complimentary setup for tailgating, uh, camping, etc. I ate lunch on it today for no particular reason. Uh, but um, like I said, it does work really, really well with that. With the floor open, you do have access to what's in the back of the drawer. That is both a positive, it's also a negative, I think, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so yeah, you also get the rolling drawer and the rolling drawer is lock it in place. It's about nine and a half inches deep. It is lined. As you can see, I've got a lot of just kind of randomness in here, but a full cobalt tool set. I've got a couple of camp chairs, tape, Velcro, fire extinguisher, almost everything that you would ever want on a road trip. I can fit in here. I also have room to throw uh, an extra jacket, really anything that I want kind of out of prying eyes and want to protect when I have the top down, I can probably fit it in here. So really, really happy about that. And then you have the side storage, which has these nice kind of marine style latches, pops out of a groove. And this gives you some additional covered storage that's out of sight, uh, but it is not locking in any way, shape or form, but quite a bit of space to just throw. I've got a jacket, I've got a uh, emergency kit back there. Things that I might want access to with the top down and this drawer locked uh, that I want to get to quickly, uh, then I'm not that worried about someone stealing. So you're going to get two of these, one on either side. So let's talk about the first thing that I really like, and that is the fit and finish in the Jeep JL. Now I've had to do some modifications that we'll talk about to fit around the subwoofer, but as you can see, it fits very much like a factory piece. Now I do wish they'd used darker carpet, but it is a very clean uh, install. And I think it looks really, really great in the back of the Jeep. Second thing I really like is the build quality. If we pull the floor open, you can see massive sealed bearings. Uh, everything is marine grade plywood. It's marine grade mildew resistant carpet, uh, aluminum frames, stainless steel hardware. It is overbuilt in my opinion. In fact, it makes it quite heavy, but it does enable this system to be able to hold 600 pounds on top. So pretty much all the luggage and gear that you would ever want to pile on top of this, this is built to handle it. Uh, all of the fittings are really, really well done. The carpet is really heavy duty. I know so because I had to cut some of it uh, and it is thick, heavy carpet. So uh, it is really, really well made and I appreciate that. Third thing I like, and it kind of ties into the well made, is that it is very quiet. Uh, because the drawer is lined, because it is such heavy plywood and because it is so well made, it does not rattle. You cannot hear things shifting in the back. Uh, it is just a coffin of sorts back here for your gear. And in a vehicle that has way more noise than it needs to begin with, it is great that this does not add additional sound um, to the cacophony of noises that are already happening in the Jeep. The final thing I really like is the size. Um, certainly it could have been bigger, it could have been taller, it could have been smaller. But what I found is that this is kind of a magic number of around nine, 10 inches for the drawer. Almost everything I wanna put in there has fit in there. I also like the fact that it only comes up about three quarters of the way. So if you are running the soft top, you have suitcases, things of that nature sitting on top of this. When you accelerate, they're not going to slide back 
and push into your window. So you have a nice buffer still for that. Completely covers the back of the Jeep, which I really like. And the extra storage on the sides is kind of a bonus that uh, I candidly was not expecting to use as much as I do use it. So we'll kick off the what you might not like section of this video outside. And uh, so this is my Willis. It only has 7,000 miles on it. I have upgraded the tires to a 285 70 17. So they're measured out. They're about a half an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch taller than the stock uh, 255 75s. And what you might notice, I know this is a bad angle, the Jeep appears to actually slope down in the back. Uh, in reality, if you measure from the front to the ground and the back to the ground, uh, it is almost level. It is less than a half an inch difference. Going to a dealership and looking at a brand new Willis on the lot, I discovered that the back of my trailer hitch, if I go from my trailer hitch to the ground versus the trailer hitch to the ground of a new Willis, I have dropped over an inch in rear height. Now, mind you, I'm actually running a taller tire. And even with a taller tire, I am still one inch lower at the trailer hitch. So that's kind of the first issue is that this is a very heavy unit. It's well built and it's sitting over the axle and really behind the axle, which is causing a little bit of squat. Now I am looking at a new suspension system for this, so it's probably not gonna be an issue for me, but keep in mind, similar to putting on a heavy bumper or a very large rear tire, you might need to look at a suspension solution to give you a little more height in the back if you put this in place. Item you might not like number two is functionality of the rear tailgate and rear window. Now, I installed this unit, ran it for about two weeks, and it wasn't until I went to the grocery store in the rain my first time, threw the tailgate open, and normally would just throw my bags in the back, and what you'll see is you can't. To put any bags of any size, suitcases, coolers, pretty much anything that is taller than about nine inches, you have to open the rear window. And that can be annoying when it's cold. It's annoying when it's raining. Um, now, my solution to that, because this is an unlimited and I very seldom haul anyone in the back seat, I now put my groceries, bags, things of that nature. I just have gotten in the habit of throwing them in the back seat. Obviously it's still completely functional, but 90% of the time that you're gonna to wanna to put anything in the back of the Jeep, you are going to have to open that back window up to get access. An additional issue similar to the access is that this is not watertight, dust proof, or sealed from the elements in any real way. Now, as I mentioned in the pros, it is really high quality stuff. So it is marine grade plywood, it is mildew resistant carpet, but as you can see, you can actually see in the drawer, there is a gap. It does not close with any type of seal. Um, there's nothing rubberized to keep water out of the edges. And then certainly your side floor storage, uh, while it does fit tight, is not a, a sealed space. So. If you frequently run topless and uh, rain, shine, snow, dust, all of that is going to make its way into the drawer. Uh, you might not have that problem with something like a, a storage box um, or something like the, um, you know, the floor systems uh, that Goose Gear makes. So something to keep in mind, your stuff's going to get dusty, your stuff might get wet. Um, so while the box itself is water resistant, waterproof, um, the, the contents are not going to be protected. The biggest thing you might not like is the price. So as I mentioned before, this is actually two different parts. It is the universal drawer and floor system, and then the Jeep JL 
unlimited specific mounting set. For this entire package, which it's really well made, it's around $1,400. So a significant amount of money to basically put a drawer in the back of your Jeep JL. Uh, for me, I looked at it similar to the way I would look at wheels and tires or a suspension system. To make this a road trip vehicle for me, I needed this secure storage. I needed to access it this way. So I needed to spend that $1,400. But for many of you, especially those on a budget, this is probably going to be the last solution that you look at. Okay, let's talk about installation. Now, as I mentioned, in my Jeep, I'm running the entire kit that is offered for a Jeep JL Unlimited without a sunroof, a subwoofer. Now, I do have a subwoofer, we'll talk about that. My recommendation to you is that you should spend the $215 extra to get the side mount kit. Now, if you choose not to, Quadratech will sell you just this box for $1,200. It does not come with any mounting hardware and you will need to go to a hardware store and get yourself an angle, a 90 degree angle uh, piece. Now, this is what comes with the kit. It's really nicely done aluminum you could really use anything that allows you to line up to the bolt holes for the tie downs that are already in the back of the Jeep and to the bolt holes in the box. So that will mount the box. If you do that, you will then have the box with open storage on either side and that will work just fine. My opinion is it is worth the extra $215 regardless of what system you have to have that whole kit. And here's why. One, as I mentioned, you get a great flat floor system that looks factory. And to me, that's worth, if I'm already spending $1,200, another $200 to have it look like it's meant to be there, made sense. Two, if you are not skilled in modifying uh, parts for your Jeep, you can install this side and leave this side empty. And I did that for the first month. The install is so simple. You're going to pull the drawer out of the box. It does come fully assembled. You're going to pull the drawer out of the box. There's two clips in the back that you're going to take off that keep it in the drawer. You then literally use the angle bracket to mount this to the floor of your Jeep three bolts on either side, three screws hold this in, three screws hold that bracket in, and you are mounted. You slide the drawer back in, and you're good to go. And again, you can run it with just here to here and be just fine. You're gonna get a mostly flat floor. I kept jackets in here. I kept this collapsible cooler in there. Um, and really it didn't bother me except going into the garage every day and seeing these parts just sitting there not being used. If you want to modify it, it is painfully simple if you follow these simple steps. So first off, you're going to take a piece of cardboard. I used a, I think it's a compass or a protractor, but the little spready thing. I bought it at a dollar store and I traced out on cardboard and followed the line all the way down. And I made a cardboard template. And what you can see is it gets, obviously there's the subwoofer, but it gets narrower to wider. And then it gets narrow again as it goes down. So you're gonna want a really accurate template. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece. As you can see, it is much narrower on this side than the other. So you're going to, on the outer edge, mark using that template where you want this to be. Then I peeled the carpet back, used a Dremel tool to cut along that line, pushed the carpet back in, attached it, done. That is probably the hardest piece. 
uh, with the Dremel tool that did not cut easily. In fact, in a couple spots I had to use a hacksaw. So just be mindful that that is gonna take you a little bit of time, but with patience, it is not that hard to do. Secondly, the bracket for the back, I could not find a way to make it work the way I wanted it to. So I simply took a two by six that I had in my garage. I cut it so it came just to the bottom of the sliding floor. The sliding floor is the same thickness as this lid. So it sits just below there. There are three holes, as I mentioned, for the bracket. I just ran three wood screws through those holes and now I have my rear support. So that gives you your rear support, your front support. And then using again that template, you're going to take the right hand side, which looks very much like this. You're gonna remove the two cleats because you don't use them. You're going to take this off, it's just six wood screws, which is gonna give you a relatively flat piece of wood that you can lay your cardboard template on, trace it out and cut it. Now, I'd recommend leaving a little more carpet than I did. Um, I kind of wish I had done that, but um, nevertheless, you can take that template. I just used a jigsaw to cut this and got it in pretty good place. Reinstalled the support bracket. If you had enough carpet, you could glue the carpet back down. I still need to glue mine down and you now have a perfect fit. So not terribly difficult. I think it took me a total of about 45 minutes to an hour, but it is well worth it. Or you can wait. As I said, they are coming up with a install kit specific to the subwoofer, but if you're wanting it now, it is not that difficult. And it gives you a little bit of satisfaction that you modified this yourself, which let's be honest, that's what Jeeping is all about. So I hope you found this video somewhat useful. Like I said, I wasn't able to find that many reviews of the ARB Outback system, and certainly I couldn't find anything for the Jeep JL. So hopefully this is useful, helps you make a decision on what to buy and how to buy. If you have any questions about the install, about the purchase, about the product in general that I didn't cover in the video, please leave it in the comments below and I will respond as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. I don't get paid for this, this is not my job. I just think it's fun to do. Uh, and I like being able to share kind of some of the challenges that I have and the successes that I have in hopes that others like me will be successful uh, and resolve some of their challenges through my trial and error. So thanks again. We'll talk soon when I have the next product review.